Otitis media is an infection of the middle ear space, which is the ear containing space behind the eardrum. Otitis media is one of the most common reasons for children to visit a pediatrician and one of the most common reasons for children to undergo surgery. As parents, you are familiar with the sleepless nights and pain and fussiness. Tubes are often recommended in children who have had four infections in the past six months or who have had persistent fluid for three months or more. Occasionally, tubes are placed urgently in children with severe acute infections that are not responding at all to antibiotics. He's had a chronic ear infection for about four months um, and one, the last one lasting for two months. Let's see this year. This procedure immediately improves hearing and relieves pain. In most children, tubes prevent further infection and lessen the need for prolonged antibiotics. An adenoidectomy is commonly offered at the time of myringotomy. The tonsils and adenoids are lymphatic tissue. They serve the purpose of recognizing bacteria in your nose and throat and producing antibodies to help you fight infection. When you've had chronic infections, or chronic allergies, the adenoids become enlarged and they can become infected with the very bacteria that they're trying to capture. On your initial office visit, your child will be evaluated by an ear, nose, and throat specialist. We will carefully examine the ear with an otoscope and remove any wax that may be obstructing the canal. The night before surgery, it's very important that you don't have anything to eat or drink. Small children can have breast milk up to four hours before surgery or clear liquids like apple juice, water, or black coffee up to two hours before surgery. On the morning of surgery, your child will be registered by the staff at the surgery center. The surgeon will greet you, verify identification, and confirm the planned surgery. The surgeon won't take but about uh, five minutes and a little laughing gas or put the tubes in his ears and bring them right back to you. Parents may escort their children to the threshold of the operating suite and then return to wait in the pediatric perioperative area. Once your child is comfortably asleep and breathing easily, the surgeon will examine the ears under a microscope. All wax and debris will be removed, and then a small cut is made in the front of the eardrum, well away from the delicate bones. Any fluid is evacuated, and a tube is gently inserted on each side. The risks of myringotomy with tubes are perforation, drainage, and hearing loss. About 1% of patients have to have a second operation to have the small hole repaired. A lot of patients are afraid of anesthesia, but in fact, anesthesia today is extremely safe. I've been told that anesthesia is as safe as driving a car. Hi, she's all done. Um, surgery went very, very well. Uh, the left ear had a bit of infection, the right ear is healthy today. Okay. Problem surgery. Okay. And um, she's got new tubes in. Okay. And um, hopefully we'll be very comfortable. Good. Have you got any questions? No. Okay. After a brief stay in the recovery room, your child will be returned to you. You probably won't even have time to read the paper. We will give you eardrops immediately after surgery. You may use Cipridex or Floxin. These are the only two brands that are FDA approved to put in a perforated ear. Swimming is permitted after myringotomy with tubes. I would recommend that you avoid intentionally dunking your child's head in dirty bathtub water or lakes or rivers. After your tubes are placed, we'll want to see you back in about two weeks to check the position of the tubes and to make sure that the ears are healthy. And we'll follow you every six months thereafter. Hopefully, putting tubes in your ears will restore your hearing and prevent those painful infections.